is an ESPN special presentation. It's been the wildest offseason in NFL history. Lambeau Field is home to Reggie White now. The Packers have made him. Lot is now a New York Jet. The 10 time Bill no Montana team. has agreed to contract terms to KC Chiefs. Today, the madness continues with the NFL draft as teams zero in on a pair of potential franchise quarterbacks Notre Dame's Rick Meyer and Washington State's Drew Bledsoe. But moving up with a bullet is George's Garrison Hurst. We're talking football on the draft from New York City and points beyond on ESPN News. Yes, we know it's late April, but it's football front and center at the 58th annual selection meeting, as it is called properly, here at the Marriott Marquis in New York. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Chris Berman. So glad you could be with us for our 14th year of live coverage of the NFL Draft. We have never seen an offseason like this, and so therefore it follows that we may never see a draft like this. There's never been a shorter draft than this. This is only eight rounds. There's never been a draft with as many picks in the first round as this one, 29. There has never been so little known the night before by player personnel, general managers, and coaches as there was for this draft. And unlike any other year, we are everywhere. We have four war room cams, and we are in eight headquarters around the league. Starting off with the team that has the very first pick in Foxborough, Massachusetts, our compatriot, if you will pardon the pun, Tom Jackson. Good morning, Tom. Chris, there's heavy speculation here in New England that Bill Parcells' first choice in the draft is going to be Drew Bledsoe. As soon as he makes that choice, we're going to have him right here. Now let's go to Fred Edelstein in Santa Clara. Thanks, Tommy. It's been an historic week for the 49ers. Joe Montana is gone. A new era begins. Because of the Montana trade, the 49ers have two number one picks. Right now, they're up in their offices, burning up the phone lines, trying to wheel and deal. They're thinking defense, defense, defense. Now let's join Gary Danielson in Tempe. All right, thanks, Fred. The story here for the cards is three picks in the top 32 selections. They'd like to get three starters, of course, that valuable fourth pick, and they'd love to take Garrison Hurst. We'll be inside the draft room with the draft cam, and we'll see them sweating up close and personal. Now down to Brad Nessler. All right, Gare, Paul Gruber, offensive tackle, is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' designated franchise player. The question is, will he still be a Buccaneer when Sam Weish makes his choice in the number six slot? Speculation, the Bucs may try to move up from that number six position, possibly go for Garrison Hurst. We got draft room cam in there, and Sam, with his second season, trying to rebuild the Buccaneers. Let's go to Chris Mortensen now. Mort. Thanks, Brad. Well, Reggie White has gone in Philadelphia, but the Eagles have the 13th and 24th picks of the first round. They'd like, like to move up, up to get a defensive lineman to replace White and maybe even Texas A&M safety Patrick Bates. Let's go to Steve Cyphers in Needham Prairie. Chris, a landmark day for the Vikings. A first round pick for the first time in five years, plus four selections in the first 79 picks overall. And yet another draft room cam will be here to capture all the hubbub and activity. Now let's go to Andrea Kramer. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Steve. No draft room cam, but player cam here in Atlanta, where we will meet a number of players getting ready for the biggest day of their athletic careers, including star Alabama defensive end Eric Kerr. Now let's head down to Irving, Texas, and Chris Myers. The Cowboys, of course, drafting last in the first round. Dallas returns all of its starters from the Super Bowl championship team. They are expected to trade down out of the first round for a couple of second-round picks and look for depth. We'll keep an eye on it on Draft Room Cam. The birth of Draft Room Cam was right here in Dallas. Let's kick it back to New York and Chris Berman. Chris, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very large. Always good to see the birth of Draft Room Cam, and always good to see if it's the draft, you know that it's the rebirth of Mel Kuyper Jr. and Joe Theismann, and uh, we are all uh, tingling with anticipation. It looks like it's going to be quarterbacks. Drew Bledsoe, Rick Meyer, 1-2. How 1-2? Who would you pick one, Joe? How one, two? I would probably, if I was New England, I would take Rick Meyer. The reason I would take Rick Meyer is because I think that he could sell tickets in the New England area to the Notre Dame fans. As far as their athletic ability goes, both these young men compare very favorably. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Drew Bledsoe. Throws the ball a little bit quicker, gets it out a little bit quicker. Rick Meyer is still an unknown as far as throwing goes. The knock on him has been he's not a very accurate passer. It's hard to evaluate because you haven't seen a lot of that on film. 
Yeah. But you would pick Meyer. I would spoken like a true Golden Domer, <laughs> and you may have a busy day to sing the fight song for Notre Dame. Mel, you like Bledsoe better. Why? I always have, Chris, and I disagree with Joe. I think you build a team with the quarterback, and of course, selling tickets, you sell tickets when you win. I don't think Rick Meyer would determine that. Drew Bledsoe is a franchise quarterback. The Dallas Cowboys, when they started to rebuild, went for Troy Aitman and built around him. The Patriots have two second round picks, a third and two fourths. They're in a great position to build and develop this team around Drew Bledsoe. Another thing to remember about uh, Coach Bill Parcells is we get set to go up to the uh, podium and, and let the commissioner, Paul Tagliabu, kick off the 58th annual selection meeting. Welcome again to the 58th annual National Football League annual draft. The first selection will be made by the New England Patriots. So as they say, there's the foot in the ball, and it's traveling down to the goal line, and we're underway. The Patriots, now, if you're just joining us for the first time here, each first round pick, the team has 15 minutes to make a selection. And since they've waited this long, what's the rush? Why not wait 15 minutes? But it doesn't sound like they will. The card has gone up to the commissioner, and let's check it out. The uh, Patriots select Drew Bledsoe, quarterback, Washington State University. Now uh, there's Drew Bledsoe, young man from Washington State, with the new the next choice Patriots made by the Seattle Seahawks. logo on the hat. And we have with us here, as you see, Bledsoe. Well, this is the new colors of the New England Patriots. Now, number one, we don't know that he's going to wear number one. We do know that he's the first pick of the draft. He was 11 in college, so maybe we just add one on. <laughs> and this is it. The official jersey of the Patriots with the logo. And Drew Bledsoe is now a member of the New England Patriots. Uh, Bill Parcells, what I started to say, guys, see, he's not a guy that has to win this year. He's going to be there four or five years. Why not start right out and develop a quarterback, whoever it is, you have time with him. Bill's not going anywhere. No, and I think something's very interesting, too, here, Chris. you got to remember, this is Bill's first draft that he's had an opportunity to be in charge of. Being in charge of this draft, he went after the right pick. Mel made the mention of it. Like I said, the only reason I thought Meyer might go there was for ticket sales. Either one of these young men is great to build your franchise around. Around. He certainly fits in, I think, exactly what Bill Parcells wants. A pocket passer, a guy who can get the ball down the field, never needed a guy who could run around much. All right. Tommy Jackson is up at Foxborough right now, and uh, with him is the man that made the selection, Bill Parcells. Tommy. Coach, uh, how are you feeling about that first choice that you've got? Well, I'm feeling very good, Tom. I think we uh, selected a player that's... Uh, going to be able to make a significant contribution to our team and I think uh, eventually he'll be a guy that can uh, really do a good job for us at the quarterback position but I do want to uh, dispel the myth that I would term this quarterback a franchise quarterback I don't think that kind of label is uh, a proper one to put on a young guy coming out of college I think he's a guy that we think can help us and make that contribution later on but I know the media will refer to him as a franchise quarterback, but I don't view it that way. Why uh, Bledsoe over Meyer? Well, I think uh, in the end it was uh, just a little bit more of the uh, ability to throw the ball, the, uh, the certainty that uh, and, and being able to witness him do that uh, effectively. I think they're both very fine players. I think both of them are going to be very successful in their NFL careers, but our personal preference was Drew Bledsoe. Coach, there was so much speculation over the people wanting to trade to get that pick. How close did you come to trading that pick, and, and in the end, why did you keep it? Well, we, we obviously kept it because we thought it was in our best interest to do so. Uh, there were a couple of very, very strong proposals, uh, not more than that, just, just two or three very strong proposals, but uh, they didn't really ever approach offset and we thought the value that uh, uh, we had with uh, Drew Bledsoe. Coach, does this kid come in as your starter right now? No, I don't think so. You know, I've never been a guy to 
try to throw anybody the wolves. So uh, I can tell all the fans and all the people in the NFL, he'll play when he's ready. Thanks, Coach. Let's go back to Chris Berman in New York. All right, Tommy and Bill, thank you. He'll play when he's ready, and no one will be more interested as to when he's ready than Bill Parcells. Since the common draft uh, in 1970, now with Bledsoe's selection as a quarterback in the number one slot, there have been eight quarterbacks picked first overall. Jeff George in 90, Troy Aikman in 89, Vinny Testaverde in 87, John Elway in 83, Steve Bartkowski in 75, Jim Plunkett in 71, Terry Bradshaw, 1970. Pretty good company for a true Bledsoe. Seattle is now on the clock. If Bledsoe was there, their card goes right up. Now, all of a sudden, with Meyer there, not the local product, they may take the full 15 minutes. While they think about it, why don't we think about Drew Bledsoe? Joe had a chance to spend some time with him as Bledsoe looks at his future as a pro. of what makes Drew Bledsoe so special. Bledsoe possesses the arm strength and athletic ability to make the most difficult of throws. He's able to back straight out looking to his left and make the strong, accurate pass to the right side of the field. Besides the arm, it requires great footwork. This ability I liken to John Elway. Some have made mention of Bledsoe's release point. It's a three-quarter style, but the delivery is not uncommon in the league. I don't see it as a problem. His size helps him overcome it and it won't be a factor when given the proper passing lane to throw through. One adjustment I would make is how he carries the ball. Carries it low like Dan Marino. But no one possesses Marino's quick release. Raising the ball higher will help his mechanics when faced with making any throws. Bledsoe also possesses great pocket presence. While pressure is collapsing his protection, Drew is able to keep his concentration and find the receiver. A trait some current NFL quarterbacks do not possess. The other trait I love about him is his fiery attitude. Its importance cannot be overlooked. Well, first and foremost, a quarterback has to be the leader. You know, he has to be the guy that, in a tough situation, that, the t that his teammates can look to and say, hey, you know, he's going to get the job done. If there's two minutes left and you're down by a touchdown, then you have to be able to come into the huddle and look at the quarterback and say, hey, he's going to get it done for us. He's going to win the game. So Drew Bledsoe now goes to the New England Patriots, where he is not an immediate starter. They have Scott Zolak, Z-O-L-A-K, Zolak, for you Kings fans. They have Scott Seacules. But now they have Drew Bledsoe. How does he really have to alter his game to fit Bill Parcells, or does he alter it? I don't think he has to alter his game, Chris. I think the unique thing about Drew Bledsoe is he brings a lot of natural talent, and it's important that Bill Parcells has said, I don't expect him to start right away. I'm going to get him ready when he's ready to go. He is going to need a quarterback coach. He he and Meyer, both, uh, both these young men, have not had, I think, the tutoring in college that they will get or could have gotten possibly at another school at the college level. Coaches try, but you need a specific position coach. I think that's going to be very, very important for the development of Drew Bledsoe. Ray Perkins will do a good job as an offensive coordinator, but will he have the time to spend tutoring this young man in the art of quarterbacking? That's a question in my mind that remains. Once upon a time, Joe and Mel, uh, the Patriots were laden with wide receivers but now and remember a number a former number one pair fryer is gone to Miami these are the wide receivers and catches they had last year McMurtry leading those that are left with 35 and of course Hartley Dykes coming off a uh, a veritable plethora of injuries of course he has excellent tight end in Marv Cook a Pro Bowl tight end who you will probably get to know very well sacks 